which sounded fab this month. And I think it was the music, and I think it was the cadence, and I think it was the green growing on over here that you just kind of got in touch with. And you came with a joyful heart, and I hope to keep that going for us this morning. Neville Goddard, who was a wonderful spiritualist, author, uh, metaphysician, said this, Prayer is not so much what you ask for, as how you prepare for its reception. Prayer is not so much what we ask for, but how we prepare for its perception. Do we expect our prayers to really be answered? Or do they take this form? I hope you're not too busy. <laughs> but if you can find time, could you answer this prayer? Now, now you don't have, I know you're busy, but you know. Oftentimes our prayers aren't answered because we don't ask expecting them to. Or we pitify them. We say, <clears throat> meaning there's kind of an, a pen penitent prayer, like if, or a bargaining prayer. How many of you know bargaining prayers? You know, God, if you give me this, then I'll give you that. And if you'll give me this, then I'll give you that. No, it's not a penitent prayer. It's not a bargaining prayer. Ask, believing. It is, as Jesus told us, but few of us remember it or believe it, your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Everything you want, ask for, it's yours. Believing is the pivotal word. Ask, believing. Because oftentimes we crouch back from our prayer. Oh, it's so big. Yeah, it's, it's too big for God. Hello? It's too big for God. Nothing. No prayer. Carlos, Chaplain Carlos, referred to our prayer box. And I was reminded of how wonderful my time was when I prayed in the prayer chapel at Silent Unity. It was part of my ministry training. And their chapel at Silent Unity, where these prayers go after 30 days, is a small copiella, top on the Silent Unity building. You've probably seen it on your daily word. It has 12 chairs in it, you know, those big kind of wraparound chairs, a little footstool, and little blankets, because it's cold. It's at the very top of the Silent Unity building. And so we would go in there half hours. You can only go in there if you're a a licensed unity minister, or if you're part of the silent unity team. So it's a sacred place. And there are baskets from floor to ceiling around, they'll be kind of behind you, of prayers from around the world. It, it's just an amazing thing. And they have a, a lighted globe and kind of a recessed where Diane is, and it says, Peace be still, from Psalms, David. Peace be still, kind of in golden letters. And so we go in there and we pray. Because we know a peaceful heart is a receptive heart. Don't so you think most of the times when you prayed or something and you let it go, the Sabbath is a time of rest, you don't have to babysit your prayers. You pray, you believe, you put it in the prayer book, and you let it go. And we handle it from here, and then we pass it on. So it's blessed and blessed again. We have prayer chaplains that call and say, this is your prayer chaplain. How may I pray with you? Now, I'm going to give you a little instruction because they're going to be calling you this week. And if you'd like to have a prayer, please sign up. If you don't think you need a prayer, then you can take your name off. But here's what they'll say. How may we pray with you? And many of you say, my life is going really good. I don't need a prayer. Let me remind you of Jesus' prayer. The prayer of thanksgiving. Before he prayed and after he prayed, they were bookends. Father, I know you hear me. You always hear me. This part. Father, thank you. I know you hear my prayer. It's praying, believing, asking, and it's giving thanks for prayer. So if you don't have one when they call you this week, have a prayer of gratitude. If your life is good, you're doing something wonderful with your mind, with your heart, with your action steps. Oftentimes, when we pray, we say, I really don't have anything to pray about. My life is good. Well, how about taking your life to the next step and making it great? And then after great comes awesome. And then awesome squared. 
and then awesome to the infinite power. And it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and better and better. You don't think you're finished getting good, do you? I mean, you might be on a little plateau where you're looking out and saying, man, everything's kind of cool. You know, I think of those of you, Becky and Carl, who are parents and say, well, my kids are healthy and job is good and I'm feeling good and mom's coming over and my life is pretty good. Give thanks and move on up, as Mr. Jefferson said, to the big time. <laughs> you're not done. God still has a plan for you. And we're going to unpack that idea. Charles Fillmore said this, and, and many of you are studying to keep a true Lent book. He said that the Sabbath is meant, like Jesus said, for man. And, you know, we have stories of Jesus going ahead and plucking the corn and doing healings on the Sabbath. And, you know, the Pharisees were just waiting to catch him doing something wrong because they were kind of afraid of, of this powerful man that was calm and quiet but had a lot going for him. So they were trying to catch him in straying from the law and... Jesus, as we know, was a lawbreaker. I mean, he was a renegade of his kind in his time. He was a good renegade, but nonetheless, he was a rebel. So, so he said, the Sabbath is made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And the Sabbath idea is one of rest. When Woody and the musicians sing and play, there is a, a symbol for rest. I don't know what it is because I don't rest a lot in my life, but I'm sure there is one. I mean, I do. But the music, life is a movement and a rest. And both are good. And we need both. But the Sabbath is for you to take any time you've completed a work and you just can be quiet. Take a drive. Have an ice cream cone. Take a walk. Take a nap. Pet the cat. Whatever it is between the next activity. That's what it's for. Traditionally, it's been on Sunday. Sunday is a day of rest. You say, well, God rested on the seventh day. No, probably not. Probably took a nap, looked around, and planned the next universe or whatever. But you don't have to stop. You keep moving in your life, but in a quieter way. Life gets noisy and excited and we play music. We rest. Does that make sense to you? That's how it's supposed to be. And it's the same way with prayer. It says you, you pray and then you let it go. Because God's got it. If you've asked for it, it's a done deal. Now, here's the part that we get a little lazy. We ask for it. We ask for a big prayer. And then we sit. <laughs> <laughs> and we wait. And we do nothing. I wonder where God is with my prayer. <laughs> Does that kind of prayer have power? No. God, I'd love to experience this. And while you're bringing that to me, I'm running toward you. Yeah. I want, I'd like to have this. I express this. I pray for this. Get ready. A new car? Clean out the garage. New clothes? Clean out your clothes. Brazil is helping me with that. So, but, but the idea is you have to step into it. I'm going to lead you through a practice now that I love very much. And I know Carlos is going to help me keep good track of this so I don't overgo. So will you please give me the heads up when I'm just about finished out of my time, 16 minutes. It's from the Prosperity Plus. How many of you have taken that or are in it right now? Okay. So you've heard this a little bit, but now's the time to hear it again. And it's where the preparation part comes. So she says, you have to step into it. If you're praying for a new relationship, you have to get ready. Girls, you get your nails done, you get a new hairstyle, you go to the gym, you clean your house because you're going to be having company for dinner. <laughs> you, you get ready if that's your prayer. If you're serious about changing your life or you want a new home, you start packing. You start getting the dishes. You have a couple of yard sales. You move toward it. If you're going to get healthy, you join a gym. You get gym shoes. First pair of gym shoes Linda's had in her whole life. But she's ready to be healthy because there's evidence of it. Whatever you want, whatsoever you ask, believing, but you have to do your part. 
How does your prayer, when it comes, how does it, how does it feel? How does it look? How does it taste? How does it smell? You have to step into it. So, are you with me? Do you do this? Five steps. Here's your prayer. Not so much what you ask for, but how you prepare for its reception. You may as well not pray at all if you're just going to wait for God to bring it to you. Ever had a prayer that's just been hanging around? You know, you look back at your journals and say, I've been praying that for years, and it hasn't happened. Well, now's the time, if that's still on your heart, and it's important, to give it the energy that it deserves. We've been giving energy to our gardens out here, and Lori has helped us with that, and they're growing. We're going to harvest, the, the students are going to harvest a head of cauliflower. Now, some of it has gone to seed, but we've been out there, we've been tilling it, we've prayed over it, the vibrational healing people have prayed over our garden. It's growing. We have little baby kind of wannabe strawberries. I mean, you know, they're, they're working at being a strawberry, and we hope they will. But the idea is, we prayed for a garden. We prayed for that labyrinth. Five years of prayer. It doesn't matter how long. It comes when it's time. We didn't have scouts yet. That's why we couldn't have that labyrinth. <laughs> took us three more years for the scouts to show up so we could do that project. Don't quit on your prayer if it keeps coming up. How I many of you know what I'm saying? Pray that, pray that. Give it the energy it deserves or let it go. Because it has a little bit of your energy anyway. It has that latent energy. You know, every time you, you look at it or, or bring up that plan for the new kitchen or whatever, you think, I can't look at that anymore. Pray it up, make it happen, or let it go, and re-energize for what's new now. You may not want or need that anymore. Something fresh and new is knocking on your door saying, let me in, I'd love to express. Say, I'm, I'm busy, I'm waiting for that prayer <laughs> to be answered. It doesn't happen that way. Whatsoever you ask, believing is yours is yours. It's already here. Flight was already here. The Wright brothers just happened to hook their belief to what was already present. And it manifests. That's how it is with you and your prayer. It's already there in spirit. Kind of planted that seed idea in you. Now you've had some spiritual growth, some watering, some ideas, taken a class, walked a labyrinth, it's cooking in you now. You feel it? How many of you are on the brink of having prayer answered? You can just, you start tingling a little. You just kind of know, ooh, this is what it looks like. And you get more excited. Ooh, feel it. I can feel it. I can taste it. I can smell it. I can. It was that way with me and my first horse. You know this story? It took me about five years to manifest that first horse. First, I took riding lessons. If you're going to have a horse, you better know what to do with it. If your prayer is going to be answered, you better know how you're going to put that into service. Then I started getting the horse stuff, a hoof pick, a hard brush, a saddle, a bridle, a halter, horse washing stuff. And then I started looking at horses. We're a middle class family growing up in Sacramento. You know, the horse dream was way out there. The horse prayers were way out there. But I kept praying for them because everything in me said, you're meant to ride and train horses. So you keep going for that. You keep praying for that prayer. And prayers all hooked together manifest as a dream, don't they? I started out with riding lessons. I ended up training Arabian horses. Yeah. But each one was part of a prayer. You pray for that lovely new home, and then you add an addition to that home, and then you start inviting company, and then you start hosting neighborhood parties, and then pretty soon your home is on the home tour for the city. It just keeps getting bigger, and your dreams unfold, prayer by prayer. How many of you know that? How many of you are doing that? 
Every hand's up. Oh, I'll have to go home and take a nap. This is how it works. You have to believe it. You have to step up and say, I am here to claim the life that you had born in me, that seed in the beginning. I'm here to do my work. I'm here to manifest my dream. Because when I learn how to do it, I can help somebody else. I can lead them through the steps. I can say, if you have a prayer, you have to step into it and believe that it's yours and pray for it. It's not so much what we pray for as how we get ready to receive it. Get ready to receive it. Make a place in your heart, in your home, in your life for your prayer to be answered. Do it today. God bless you.